Hey everyone, in this video, we are going to study the loss differentiation method that's in the diagnostics, Sanjiao differentiation. In the previous video, when we studied the four levels, we already knew that the Sanjiao differentiation also developed in the 17th century. The author studied all the pandemics, especially the the one the ones due to warm and due to heat epigenic factors. The author recorded very well and he examined the clinical manifestation well. He described that each disease what's the manifestations. If it didn't treat well, what's the next step? How will the disease develop? And what's the prognosis of that disease? That's from the and he used the Sanjiao differentiation method to categorize the content. The reason why he used this differentiation method, why he didn't use the six meridian differentiation or the four levels, that's because in the clinical, observa the clinical observations, he found that some diseases, they happen the direction is not from the six meridians. It didn't develop from Tai Yang syndrome to Yang Ming syndrome and to Sao Yang syndrome, especially the diseases in the, in the 17th century. He also did, didn't develop directly from Qi from Wei to Qi to Yin to blood. The more close related to different organs in different location. So the Sanjiao differentiation is based on the location. When we study Sanjiao in the basic theory, we said that there are two schools of theory of Sanjiao. One is from Huang Di Neijing. He believes that Sanjiao is the pathways of where the qi, blood, water, and fire moves, which means all over the body is Sanjiao, and Sanjiao is in all over the body. And the other school uses the location. So they think that the upper jaw involves in the lung and heart. The middle jaw involves in the spleen and stomach, the lower jaw involves with the um, liver and kidney. So they use the location, different location of the human body to separate the, the diseases locations. The reason why that's because the author, the, the practitioner Wu, Dr. Wu, he realized that some diseases that's the heart, the, the lung, especially some heat, such as some flu, or even now the COVID-19. As you can see, some diseases from the weight defensive level, and then after a few days, the patient presents this difficult breathing, and even become unconsciousness. So he observed this kinds of manifestations from the lung. The patient suffer from fever. The patient suffer from or oh, nowadays we knew it's a virus. In the past, we we said the pestilent qi from the nose and mouth. The patient presents with a fever, cough, and then after a few days, some patient will develop into mental problem. You develop into the unconsciousness. So from this situation, Dr. Wu believes that this is the upper jaw problem. The reason is because the lung and the heart are all in the upper jaw. So the disease may develop 
visit in the upper jaw on the lung to the heart directly. And then he also found that some diseases, some patients also may have fever, have cough, coughing with phlegm for a few days. And then after a few days, the patient manifested as diarrhea. So it goes to the middle jaw problem, the spleen problem, the stomach spleen problem, have diarrhea. So these are some manifestations that we can see in our clinic. And now we are in the situation of COVID-19. COVID-19 is one of the very typical pandemic that we can use, Sanjiao differentiation, and the Wei Qi Yin Xue differentiation, the four levels differentiation. The reason you can see the for the COVID-19, a patient prevent, presents with fever, mild fever, mild cough, or does mild syndrome. We present with the similar to the lung in, infections, mild, mild flu syndrome, or mild syndrome, all this mild syndrome, in our theory, we think that the lung was affected. So the, the lung was affected. From the lung, after a few days, why some patient can develop into a severe case? The severe case, the patient needs a ventilator. The patient may present with unconsciousness, even the worst condition. So in this situation, the pathogen developed from the lung to the heart directly. That's the upper jaw. Also, some patients present with diarrhea. Have you seen the, the links on the upper jaw? The patient presents with a fever, cough, running nose, and then diarrhea from upper jaw to middle jaw. So these are the manifestations of the COVID-19. How can we different how then how can we analyze the manifestations? Also, this is another reason why Chinese medicine we don't afraid of the pandemic. The reason is because in the past we have seen many pandemics. We have seen many kinds of diseases that's closely related to pandemics. And then although we don't know the COVID-19, like now, a few months ago, such as in January, in February. In China, we don't know, we didn't know the COVID-19, but we know how to treat them. The reason is because we can see from the manifestations which, or, which organs has been affected. And we knew, especially from Sanjiao differentiation and the four levels differentiation, we knew that the patient might develop into severe cases. The patient might develop into diarrhea. Then we will have treatments to prevent it develop into there. That's why early diagnosis, early treatments are recommended. We don't wait. We don't similar to here that's we don't wait, we don't ask the patient to isolate at home and wait. No treatments to them. We don't do that because those patients have the possibilities to develop into a severe case. So we don't wait. We need to treat them at the milder stage to prevent it develop into a deeper, uh, a more severe condition. That's, that's how to treat the pandemics. And these, as you can see from the last video, from those older records, I didn't write all the years that the video records in the history. We have many experiences from there in the treatments of the pandemics use this kind of differentiation method. 
So this is an, an actual example that you can see around us now. Some of the pathogens can affect the upper jaw, can affect the middle jaw, also can affect the lower jaw. On the upper jaw also can develop into low middle jaw. It also can develop into lower jaw, such as the COVID-19 now. The patient present with mild flu syndrome, which is from the upper jaw linked to the lung. And then the patient may have diarrhea that's from the spleen and stomach. That's the middle jaw. The patient also may develop into lower jaw. For the severe cases, the patient will develop into dif difficult breathing. The difficult breathing related to the lung, also related to the lower jaw. So the lower jaw, the kidney, the kidney received the qi. The kidney loses the function of receiving the qi will result into shallow breathing or difficult breathing. So as you can see, the severe cases of the COVID-19, the pathogen already developed into lower jaw, also it might affect the heart. So as you can see, the, de the development of this pathogen, it can develop from upper jaw to lower jaw and goes deeper. You also can develop from the lung to the heart in the, in the upper jaw. So the, the, the development can be vertical or horizontal. So that's the characteristics of different diseases, the possibilities. The upper jaw problem. The patient may have a fever, may have mild aversion to wind cold, headache, cough, mild sweating, dry mouth. So as you can see, these manifestations are mild. That's the patient has the possibility to develop into a severe condition, high grade fever, unconsciousness mental confusion, so that's also unconsciousness, slurred be speech, whole lumps. So this situation, the severe cases, that's because the pathogen from the lung and affects the pericardium. Again, when we talk about pericardium, that's because we don't want to mention the heart, the emperor, the heart will never be affected. So we use pericardium, that's actually the heart. That's why you can see the consciousness, that's the, the function of the heart. The heart houses the mind. Or due to the heat, most of the, the, the pathogen also a kinds of heat. So the patient may present with a heat syndrome, a red tongue, red tip. Cough and panting, that's due to the, the lungs problem. And then when it develops into a severe cases, it can result into the, the can affect the function of the heart. So the patient may present with the consciousness problem. The problem in the middle jaw. The middle jaw mostly related to the spleen and the stomach. So the middle jaw, the patient may present with fever, especially in the afternoon. Again, in the afternoon, the fever in the afternoon. Yang Ming fever, fever in the qi levels, and now in the middle jaw. You will see these are all similar. Yang Ming fever, Yang Ming syndrome. Yang Ming syndrome is the stomach and the digestive system. The middle jaw here, we talk about also the spleen and stomach. So the manifestations are due to the heat, the heat in the spleen and stomach. 
the patient will have red faces, eyes, rapid breathing, dry mouth, that's all due to, due to heat. Thirst, desire to drink. Yellow, greasy coating, like the, the organs has been affected. When you see a yellow greasy coating that's in already developed into the qi level in the four levels. So that's the in the middle jiao is the manifestations in related to the qi, to the spleen and the stomach. Problem in the lower jaw, the patient will present with fever, flushed cheek, feverish sensation in the palms and soles. Again, the five heart hot, the feverish in five heart, the palms, soles, and the heart. Dry mouth, dry tongue, mental fatigue, deafness. As you can see, these are the manifestation of indeficiency. The reason is because the lower jaw mostly related to the liver and kidney, especially the indeficiency. Sparrow, tissue of the hands and feet. Palpitation, fainting, that's all due to indeficiency. Affects different organs and presents with different manifestations. So that's the link, the lower jaw link to the liver and kidney. Many key manifestations in the patient will present with fever, flushed cheek, and the indeficiency syndrome, and then the indeficiency can present with the liver indeficiency or kidney indeficiency. The patient also may have like the weakness or soreness in the waist or knees. So these are the manifestations in the lower jaw. The transmissions of Sanja problem. So we have actually introduced at the beginning of the, the video. It can develop in the up in the upper jaw, within upper jaw, middle jaw, or lower jaw, such as the spleen problem will affect the stomach problem. The lungs problem can affect the pericardium. The liver problem and the kidney problem also can develop together. So that's in within their the same level. It also can develop from upper jaw to middle jaw and to lower jaw. So it can develop horizontally or vertically. There's one patient, 40 years old male with fever presents with fever, slightly aversion to wind and cold, accompanied with the thirst, slight sweating, cough, red tongue, floating, rapid pulse. Here from the manifestations, we can see that the fever, cough, slight sweating, that's due to heat, especially when he presents as thirst, that's due to heat and floating pulse, that's exterior, a red tongue tip, that's also heat. So then you can see that the surgery is all related to the lung, the upper jaw. In from the sixth meridian, it related to the lung channel or the tie-in meridian. So the channel, you also can use the meridian. So that's how to analyze the different manifestations. The differentiation of the 12 meridians and the differentiation of the eight external meridians, we're not going to study in the diagnostics, we're going to study in the 
multifunction and multifunction, especially in after the, the location, we will know that the the exact exact distribution of these meridians. These differentiation mostly related to the distribution. So where they travel, if they have some problem there, then we can identify. If we find some problems in the in the area, such as the headache, we have many, we have studied before the headache on the side. Then we think that's the Saoyang meridian. The Saoyang meridian is from the 12th meridian. That's because on the side of the head, that's where the Saoyang meridian travels. So that's the differentiation according to the 12 man meridians. Until today, we have finished all the differentiation method that we need to study in the diagnostics. And these differentiation methods are also the main differentiation methods that's in Chinese medicine and acupuncture theory. Most importantly, it's the previous four differentiation methods, the eight principles, disease nature, etiological factors, and zhangfu organs. Zhangfu organs, the sixth meridian, four levels, and Sanjiao differentiation method, you are more than welcome to study to get to know more about them because these can benefit your future practice. Also, as you can see, the Sanjiao differentiation method we also introduced very briefly. The reason because it's also because the four levels and Sanjiao differentiation method, these two are also with the theory and its applications of each disease. It's also a full semester course. And also these, these differentiation methods are more related to the etiological factors of heat and more related to the herbal medicine. So we're not going to focus on this now, as although it is, it is more for herbal medicine, but you can use acupuncture and masturbation to assist. For instance, if you diagnose some disease in a in or blood level, now you knew that the excess heat caused bleeding in the body. You can use a herbal medicine, although it is used for herbal medicine. But if you don't have herbal medicine, if you have only the if if you have the own only the acupuncture, what can we do? In future, we're going to introduce one cases which we supposed to use herbal medicine, but at that time I don't have herbal medicine because that's in, in the, the case is not happens in the clinic. And then how can we use acupuncture to assist? That's also from our theory. That's why we need to study. We need to know all these differentiation methods. And until today, you will see that Sometimes people will think that they will ask why the Chinese medicine theory didn't develop since 17th century. The latest theory that we have studied now is from 17th century. And from 17th century until now, 21st century, there's no significant improvement in Chinese medicine. Or sometimes people will ask, can you write something on pandemics? Since you knew the, the theory. The answer is a no. As you can see, when we introduce the backgrounds of the development of these differentiation methods, they all have the social backgrounds. It's not the self that we study in the book from the books. We, we sit in the office and then we think 
we write a new theory. We create a new theory. That's another way from Chinese med Chinese medicine and acupuncture from the developments and also from your for your future practice. How to improve your skills? You need to see patients. You need to see more patients. So since we don't have the background, the social backgrounds of pandemic, there's no way to develop the theory because our living condition is become our living condition becomes better, our hygiene becomes better. So there will be less more there will be less pandemics such as now the COVID nineteen. The previous one, as far as I remember, was 2002, 18 years ago. The one even before 2002, the SARS in China, especially in, uh, I talk about the one in China, was in 1950s, so about 70 years ago. With these several pandemics, there's no way to develop a new theory from there. So all what we need to do is we also study the history. From the history, we will know how we can improve our skills, in which aspects we can improve our skills. For instance, if you are interested in the pandemic, the treatments towards the pandemic, but there's no pandemic, then you need to change your direction or you need to go to some areas this has pandemic such as the ebola in some african countries if you willing to assist with chinese medicine with those pandemics you need to go to there to see the patient there not from the textbook not from the articles online you need to see the patient that's the social backgrounds to support your clinical skills and uh, the use, the applications of these different differentiation methods we can use. Zhangfu organs, that's the foundation. The six meridians, although we use different meridians, they also link to the Zhangfu organs. The four levels it also links to Zhang Fu organs. The Wei defensive is linked to the is linked to the lung. The San Jiao meridian, the San Jiao differentiation, the upper jiao also related to the lung and pericardium. The middle jiao related to the to the spleen, the qi level related to, to the spleen, the yang ming syndrome also related to the spleen. So as you can see, all these theory is actually a complete the theoretical framework. They link together, although when we study, we separate them. But the more you think about them, the more they will be connected to each other. So these are the brief introduction of the differentiation method. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to drop me, drop me an email. Thank you for your attention.